Hello lovely people, today we will be looking at Alpine 30MC 3 inch mid-range drivers. So these are the drivers that I was very very excited about and as always thank you very much Frank from HEPA King for supplying me these, sending me these for a quick review. Thank you very much Frank. First thing I asked Frank if he can get these because I was very very interested in them. So these were released about two years ago, 2020, so two and a half, three years ago. They were meant to complement all the component sets that Alpine has. So Alpine is notorious for having only two-way component sets, so six and a half or six by nine, and a tweeter, one inch or a bigger one. And this was, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first component mid-range driver that Alpine started to offer. Alpine had some bigger ones like four inch, five inch uh, coaxial drivers that meant to go into like factory locations, but they never had a dedicated mid-range driver. So this is the first one. This is gonna be a full review. We're gonna unbox it. We're gonna take TS parameters, distortion measurements, and we're gonna compare with other drivers and it's gonna be full on review of these component drivers. So 30MC30 is three inch. MC, I have no idea. And uh, as I know, Alpine was in the business about 30 years. So it might be 30 something something. I don't know. The box is quite uh, comprehensive. It gives a lot of information. It's not really common for Alpine give this kind of stuff, especially a frequency response graph. Because Alpine, I don't know, I never seen Alpine giving, maybe on the older ones he used to give, but I never seen a frequency response graph of a driver. So this driver is it's rated at 50 watts RMS, which is, I think, very optimistic. I don't know. We'll see. Nominal impedance, 6 ohm. So it's not a 4, inch, 4 ohm driver. It's a 6 ohm driver. Quite low sensitivity, but it's kind of expected from a 3 inch. Resonant frequency, 125. We're going to check this with TS parameters. And recommended crossovers is uh, 250 hertz at 12 dB and 2.4 kilohertz. 12 db and what else there's nothing much else so let's open the box and see what's inside slightly zoom in on these drivers so we can see a bit better and we can see a small cute tiny three inch driver the cone it looks like some kind of plastic it's not paper. We have a regular surround because the previous mid-range drivers that I tested, the Status and the DP series, one of them has double gathered and the other one has hammer. And this is just a regular normal surround. It has a face plug dust cap yeah, and an Alpine logo in the front. The basket is, is cast aluminum it's not plastic, cast aluminum, and a ferrite motor. Yeah, nothing really special. The only, like, I don't know, di only difference from a really budget driver would be the cast aluminum basket, because usually on a budget driver, you would have stamped steel, and this is not a budget driver because these, a pair of them cost $200, 199 They're not available to buy in the UK. And two years ago, I reached out to Alpine customer service in the UK to ask them when it's going to be available and how much it's going to cost. And they said, we're not planning to sell them in the UK. So they're not available in the UK which is a shame and a surprise. So these drivers, since there's three inch, a uh, very slight comparison, for example, with the status. So status is three and a half inch, and you can see, yeah, the difference is quite big. The DP, again, same. However, DP has a much, much bigger motor. However, this is a ferrite motor, and the status has a neodymi motor. So you see the difference on the motor? And what I did as well, I purchased this. So this is a driver. Uh, it's a Visaton, uh, German. 
FRS8. These are one were one of the first full range drivers that I ever owned. And I just wanted to compare because I will be doing a separate video about dust caps as well. I did one for the mid base drivers. I want to do this exactly the same for the mid range to have a dedicated dust cap, a dust cap that is attached to the cone like these two and a kind of normal regular dust cap driver. So this is a 3.3 inch driver. So you can see like this, three inch, 3.3, three and a half inch or this one, just like that. Now, what I want to compare is basically these two drivers because this, as I mentioned, a set of these cost $200 or like 180 pounds. And this single driver cost me 10 pounds. So a pair is 20 pounds. So we can say about like eight times cheaper. And is it worth those $200? We're gonna have a look at this. I'm gonna make impedance measurements. I'm gonna have a look at TS parameters for these drivers. Then I'm gonna be doing uh, sweeps to check the distortion and we'll be comparing the distortion between this, this and the status. Because from my previous videos, if you watched it, status has the lowest distortion from uh, three and a half that I have. And it's the nicest playing. It has the lowest intermodulation distortion and everything. So we'll be testing distortion between these three drivers. So I think without any further ado, let's jump into the laptop and I'm gonna show you all the measurements that I did from this driver. Okay, so first of all, let's have a look at the impedance measurements. So these are three measurements because I did both of the Alpine MC. 30MC and because I have only one, the Visaton FRS. And we can see straight away without looking, uh, without measuring any TS parameters that FS is similar for all of these drivers. The, uh, the 30MC looks like it has about 165 Hertz, which is much more than claimed 125 in the, on the box. And some could say that, oh, drivers need to break in and the suspension is going to be looser and the FS is going to drop. It will drop, but not by 40 hertz. It's not going to drop to 125, that's for sure. It might drop down to 160, 155, maybe not that much. So I think that either Alpine is lying on the box or something is not right with these drivers, but the FS is much higher than on the box. Another thing, we have a slight blip at about 2K here, tiny, tiny mountain. So this is a driver issue, something, I don't know, maybe the surround, maybe something else. And another thing that is very, very surprising is this impedance rise. So this is caused by inductance. LE so I can see straight away only from this that the inductance of these drivers is gonna be big and for a mid-range driver it's not good. The Saturn the FRS8 uh, it's a 4 ohm driver so it has lower impedance this as I mentioned is 6 ohm driver so it sits at about like 6.6 .6, something like that and you can see that this has a lower rise so this will have a lower le value now let's have a look at the actual ts parameters if i open feel more parameters i used added mass method i'm gonna take in free air and i'm gonna take in with added mass uh, the re value of this driver is 5.1 ohms and i calculated the area to be 23 square centimeters and this is the ts parameters that it gives me according to these measurements as we can see the fs is 165 hertz which claimed 125 as i mentioned is far far different all the other parameters look kind of okay qts 0.6 so they would be suitable uh, to use in small sealed pods maybe on a pillars uh, or in dash as well they would be totally fine but it's like for small sealed enclosure 
BS, nothing special, nothing special, and this is the one, LE. So LE in ductance, 0 0.35. That is quite a lot, especially for a mid-range driver that's supposed to play high. Uh, if you remember from the previous measurements that I did on Alpine status, the status 3.5 has inductance of 0 0.06. So that's a huge difference. And uh, 0.35, even some um, SB Acoustics, SB17, the mid-base driver that I have, 6.5 mid-base, has 0 0.16, so three times less. So this is huge inductance. And I would assume this inductance will influence the distortion measurements as well. Very quickly, let's have a look at the Visaton FRS. Yeah, so this is a 3.3 inch driver. And yeah, same 160. So it's here. QTS is higher, 0. Point, almost 0. 0.9. So it's a free air driver. You can use it in the dash or in open A pillars, not in seal because in seal is going to be very uh, peaky. And LE, you can see. 0 0.14. So this is more acceptable value of inductance for a mid-range drive. Okay, so this is the TS parameters and this now let's have a look at the distortion measurements. So on the same note as I did the last time, I have three levels, 70 dB, 80 dB and 90 dB. Mostly we're going to have at the 80 dB. So this is the the three inch and now you could say, yes, three inch driver, you cannot push it uh, a lot. It's not designed to play very loud. So that's why I'm not going to check the 90 dB. I'm going to be checking only 80 dB and comparing. And as you can see at 80 dB, it has about 3.7, 3.8% already. Uh, and it has a peak of distortion between like 300 and 800 this kind of a wide peak and this is the exact range where you want this driver to play which is surprising unless you would cut it at like maybe from like six seven hundred hertz then this would go down and this would be much lower at about 2.8 percent but yeah now this valley is kind of surprising the distortion goes down and then it goes up again but again you're not going to use this three inch driver that low you would cross it probably as alpine recommends 250 with 12 db slope so with 24 db slope maybe down to 200 because it has quite high qts but yeah even if you cross it at 250 you're not going to remove this peak and it's quite a lot. So let's compare it with the FRS8. Again, price difference, $200 for a pair and maybe $50 for a pair. And you can see this. So in general, it has a bit lower distortion. It starts to rise below like two, 300 Hertz. But if you cross it at the same like 250 Hertz in the same range, this will go down and just toggling between these two you can see they have very similar distortion maybe the frs8 has a bit less in this range but a very similar distortion and now let's compare to the status you can see status has much much lower distortion this it's not even a comparison 2.7 like uh let's take for example the biggest peak so 450 somewhere it has 3.8 and the status has 2.5. So that's 1.3% more. That's quite a lot, especially in the mid-range area where the mid-range is supposed to be playing. So this is very surprising. I think this is the, the 30 MC 3-inch driver is the worst performing driver that I tested so far. Yeah, toggling between these three and have a look at the third harmonic, which is in yellow. So it peaks around here, 700 hertz, 0 0.4, whereas status, the third harmonic, see, 
it's all the way down to 0 0.1 and it starts to rise only below 200 hertz and the frs8 has as well lower third harmonic and it starts to rise just here below 300 hertz and this one the alpine has a peak here of third harmonic so thd wise like distortion wise this is the worst performing driver that i measured now let's have a look at this i call it intermodulation distortion i don't know so this is when i play just the tones 200 hertz and you have all these all the harmonics so let's remove this because it's not very interesting. So a comparison between the status and the 30 MC. And you can see straight away that status is a much cleaner driver at 200 Hertz. You have for the 30 MC, you have all of these harmonics. And actually when you play it down low, you can hear all these harmonics, especially these. It's all buzzing and everything. And the status, is let me move this. You can see it's much, much, much cleaner driver compared to this. So this is at the lower end. Now let's have a look at 1K. 30MC at 1K. And let's zoom in a tiny bit. Just like that. A little bit more. So we can see a bit better. There we go. And compared to the status, yeah, again, status has a tiny bit less, not, not a big difference, but yeah, but status is cleaner. The FRS, the one that I have, this Aton Air, so the FRS is very similar, extremely similar to the 30MC, but yeah, at the lower end, the status just smashes this 30 MC driver. So these are the measurements. And now what would be my final thoughts about these drivers? Would I recommend these? Um, no. As much as I like Alpine, uh, I am an Alpine fanboy. However, from all of these measurements and from what I heard, I wouldn't recommend these for the price that they're on. As I mentioned, they cost $200. And I think that for that price, you can have a much better value looking at some other drivers. Even if you compare it with this, very similar size, eight times cheaper. And if you take, the, for example, Fatal Pro as well, very similar driver that costs literally 10 pounds or 15 pounds. But for $200, hmm... It has high distortion, higher than any driver that I tested. It has the highest inductance LE value from all the drivers that I tested, the mid-range drivers. The build quality itself, it's fine. It is a small driver. However, with all the options that we have on the market, I want to say I'm disappointed with these drivers. I was expecting something a bit more, especially when Alpine recommends to pair these drivers with the X series, which are very good components. So with the X series components, these would be a big, big bottleneck. So yeah, all I can say that I'm uh, kind of disappointed with these drivers. It's a shame because they look very, very nice. They're little, tiny, cute drivers maybe you could use them for like rear fill or something but like for the front stage there are much better options for less now i will be testing the off-axis response of these drivers together with the dp series and this one and this one just to compare the different uh dust caps and everything however just from those measurements I might listen to them, but I guarantee that I'm not going to be using them in my front stage. It's a shame, Alpine. So I hope this video was informative. You learned something new. Uh, I gave you some feedback about these Alpine 30MC mid-range drivers. Again, it's your decision if you want to get them. I wouldn't. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one.